in my garage today, award-winning actor, Lancashire hero, and just generally lovely person, Julie Hesmanhouch. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you doing? I'm not I bad. Like this girl. I'm in my garage, yeah. I've I made it. This is where I've been making all my music, just in it's my garage. It's really nice. It's really lovely. Does it get damp or is it all right? Is it it's incredibly cold. I can't feel my feet at the moment, but it's all part of the creative process, I find. You've got to suffer for your art. So and I on the other hand, I'm in a room where my daughter has just put the radiator on. But I've also got this like fire on as well. Can you see it? I don't know. It looks so cozy. It's really cozy, but it's like the death of art because I'm I'm actually roasting and I'm a menopausal woman, so I'm <laughs> I'm sweating from every pore at the moment. So yeah, you've got it right there. I'm sweaty too because I'm exactly one week into this fitness thing. Basically, I accidentally spent this whole pandemic bulking. I've just been eating like a bad pig, and it's because I need to like let myself off the hook a little bit. It was just. I just wanted some pleasure in life, you know what I mean? And that came through garlic bread with cheese. Oh, Tom, all bets are off. There's not a single person who didn't put on about a storm during lockdown. But I think everyone lost a bit at the beginning because everyone were doing couch to 5K and all that <laughs> yeah. sort of stuff. I joined Strava with the best intentions. I was on it for like five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They got to July and everyone were like, do you know what? I, I can't do this anymore. And then winter lockdown, there's no chances. No, I know. But I'm determined and I've got myself a little treadmill. And I, I weighed myself one week. And I'm seven pounds down today after one week. I'm feeling very good about my calves. That's amazing. That's absolutely brilliant. And you're having your bran flakes, so you'll poo out about it. We were just having a chat, yeah. I had this choice okay. between cocoa pops and bran flakes this morning. I opted for bran flakes, so I feel like my whole psyche is you're changing. You're practically a guru. It's like... That I think so. I'm expecting my own TV show. <laughs> yes. about, I think a lot of people are saying I'm the new John Wicks. Joel, Joel. Oh, yeah, that's... <laughs> How have you been getting on through? Because obviously this is a terrible time for the arts. What have you been doing? Well, I've been I've been really, really lucky, Tom, because I've been doing a job down in uh, Cardiff that I was supposed to do at the beginning of lockdown. And we were right up to the, the moment that we were about to start filming. They were still pretending that that was going to happen. <laughs> and, uh, everyone was a bit like... It's like every gig we've ever rearranged. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is going to happen. Yeah, yeah, you all go start practicing now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, I'll see you on, on Monday. And then, of course, it got cancelled. But it got postponed, luckily for me. So all through lockdown, I've been one of the really, really fortunate ones that I've been. I knew I had a job at the end of it as well. Yeah. So, yeah, I started filming in... September and I finished next week. It's like a six part, so it's a bit of a pot boiler, a bit of a thriller. You know, oh, it's, it's, fun. it's fun, yeah. It's quite it's quite camp, you know, lots of like sort of like we must not say anything to anyone, just stay calm and normal. No, it's great, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got a bit of live acting then. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Masterclass. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, and so so I've been doing that for a lot of it. I've been knocking around at home with my family, which is which was, you know, in loads of ways lovely, you know, mm. and, and because my eldest daughter is 19 now and she's off to uni next year and so all this time the four of us been together and it's been pretty nice and, and I did try I did try to do a bit of self-improvement I learned a bit of sign language I did, did my really? foundation in that yeah really? never too old to keep learning Tom and uh, so it's, it's been for me you know personally as an experience it's been okay but I have lost people to Covid you know I know people who've lost parents to Covid yeah. and and you know it's just uh it's just been the weirdest time ever on it, it really I mean, I've is. never done anything like it it's so crazy it's just so weird how how life can just flip and, and nobody expected it and and all the plans that you've made just seem a bit silly, don't they, when, when things like this happen? And, but it does shift about, it, sh it makes a shift in what's important. And you're saying that, like, how you've spent that precious family time. And, you know, I've, I've spent so much time with Lara, my fiance, and, and it's time that I would never trade. And she's a nurse as well. Like, she's, I feel for her, to be honest, because she's got to be on the COVID wards all day. And then she comes home and there's me. And I'm not easy to be around at the best of times, especially when you've got... That. Don't believe that. <laughs> oh, I don't know. You've not slept next to me snoring. <laughs> All oh, the best people are big snores. <laughs> Is that true? Because you need to tell Lara that because I'm sick of getting woken up. Turn over. Shut, shut up. <laughs> it's the <laughs> fuck. Oh, yeah. You. Like some seriously violent attacks on me in my sleep. I experienced this too. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't snore. Apparently I make this like... 
this like really weird and, and I do know actually because sometimes when I'm just like about to fall asleep I catch myself doing it so I don't do a full-on snore I do a kind of like <laughs> <laughs> like it's almost like choking noise it's really irritating apparently so I get the odd like little you know little biff in bed a really well. embarrassing one actually every time I've ever fallen asleep in public and it's like you like I catch myself doing it I go like like it's a really rubbish noise that I don't want to make. I'm like doing it next to strangers. Yeah, I do it next to strangers on planes and on the bus and stuff. It's just so ugh, I hate that, but I'm always so tired. It's, it's, it's that horrible thing when you um, when you wake yourself up snoring. You know you've fallen asleep for exactly like one millisecond, like on a train <laughs> yeah. or something. When you go, <laughs> and when you let the snore oh, wake, <laughs> especially in public or when you can feel your head going. Yeah. Oh yeah. But yeah, yeah. So it has been, and I just feel like I mean, thank you, Tom, for all you've been doing in lockdown to keep everyone going and to because I think it's been really important because the big thing that's come out of it for me is realizing. Oh my God, how much I miss live performance, you know, be that theatre or music, you know, and, and I was just talking to my husband now and saying like, what were the last gig we went to? God, I mean, it was like so long ago and we couldn't remember. I think it was yeah. self-esteem and um, yes, in Manchester. And then he went to see right. her at uh, Band on the Wall as well. But that feeling, and I've been reading them, um, well, it's a really beautiful book actually, which I think, you know, knowing a bit about the stuff you're into, I think you'll really love. It's um, Kay Tempest, as, as they now are, you know, who used to be Kate Tempest, um, yeah. non-binary. And they've yeah. written this like little book called On Connection and it's all about creativity. And it's really amazing. It's like really thin little book. I read it in one go and then started from beginning again. Really? And they talk about that, being in a room with other people experiencing art, you know, whether that is theatre or music or whatever. And apparently your hearts start beating in unison. It's really? like they've done, yeah, they've done studies and, and everybody's heart starts to beat in, in the same way. And it's that assembly and that being together with other people experiencing something that you just can't replicate with online stuff. You know, I mean, I've watched a couple of online plays and I've seen a couple of online gigs and you just don't do it in the same way because you need to be next to other people. And I think I've really come to appreciate that miles more than I ever had before, actually, because... You know, sometimes when you go and see stuff, you know, people talking next day. I always end up, whenever I'm at a gig, there's always a wall of, like, middle-aged men in front of me who are at least six foot tall who don't dance. And I can see, I can see people really enjoying themselves and dancing just in front of this wall, and I can never quite get to it. It's like, I'm like, people, like, talking, and you're just like, why are you here? I mean, theatre yeah. people battling rappers, and I, I miss all of that now. You know, that's a whole yeah. part of it experience it's just like and so I think that we'll enter to this new period with like a real you know a renewed sort of passion and appreciation for all that stuff I hope so anyway and, and I think people are really starting to understand how much we all you know need the arts in our lives you know and creativity in our lives and yeah definitely yeah. and from being on the the other side of that as well like I've done a lot of the live stream gigs although it was great to play with my mates and stuff it's just it really isn't the same and there's, there there isn't a substitute for it and I feel guilty now because I used to moan about having to go and do gigs. I'd be like, I've, I've got six gigs this week. I just want to chill and watch telly. And like, I've had enough chilling watching telly now. And I, I, like, and I'm well, yeah, well, that's normal. That's just human. And we'll go back to that because I'm saying when I'm doing a play, I'm just like, oh, I just want to like catch up on my soaps. I'm just like, everyone's like, and I've got to go to the theatre and do a play. And then it's like, no, I'm just like, I will never complain again, but I will. Do you know what it's like? You, you, yeah. you do, don't you? you will come I'm just back that. getting clapped at. Like, I need that. I need that affirmation. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> little God. Bit. I think I'll cry the next time anyone claps me. I'll just be like, oh my God. It's like this, I know. I went, well, to, the, I went to see something uh, with my daughter. I went to see this ace um, theatre company called Rash Dash at home in Manchester. Um, just in that little pocket of time between lockdowns when yeah. we were a socially distanced audience. And it were about COVID. It was about uh, like a global experience, really. It was a cabaret. It's like three women and they were singing songs. So they were singing like different people's experiences a lockdown from all over the world. It was amazing. It was really beautiful. And I realised then, I was like, oh God, I wondered what our experience of reflecting this time would be afterwards. Whether mm -hmm. people want total escapism from it, whether people just want to just go, I don't want to hear about it anymore. I don't want to, I don't want to even think about it. 
whether we just want escapism or whether we'll need to have it like reflected back at us in some way. And when I saw it, I realised how much I'd needed that. I'd needed someone to, to put it in that, you know, like when you listen to a song and it's not a way that you could ever express something, but it absolutely gets to the nub of what you feel completely. Or you read a poem and it's the same. Every time I've ever like, listened to The Smiths, I get that, and I'm just like, yeah. what's the point? I could never say it in the same way Morrissey did. and Exactly, and it, and it makes you feel more alive suddenly. So, and oh, any yeah. sort of like shit feelings that you're having suddenly become a bit poetic somehow. Do you know what I mean? It gives it a context that makes sense of it and makes you feel less alone and makes you feel more alive to the world, I think. And, and I think that I hadn't realised how much I needed this experience reflected back at me in that way. And in such an extraordinary way to have three women singing it at me, you know. <laughs> and I was like properly blubbing Tom. And it's like my really? daughter gets really irritated because I'm like, whenever I get emotional, she gets really annoyed. But so I was like, I was like turning away from it. But I had them like springy tears. Ones that come out like that. Like, actually like, oh, spurting out your eyes. It wasn't just about like the subject matter. It was about the experience of sitting in this weird socially distanced audience. But just the fact of being in a room with other people like imbibing art just made me like <laughs> just amazing i can't honestly i can't imagine what it's going to be like when we get back to it because uh we released our first album in march just as as everything was being stopped and it was hard work and we had like our biggest ever gig coming up and it was at the ritz in manchester and it was nearly sold out like just on a hair away from selling out and it was honestly like one of those life moments for me like I'd grown up going to see gigs at the Ritz dreamt of doing it and then we put it on sale it sold really well I couldn't believe it and then it's been rearranged and rearranged and rearranged and, that, and I've got stupidly I've got this massive poster of it in my house and every time I walk past it I'm like Ooh. I should really, really get rid of that poster but when we actually, I'm not going to be able to do it. I know that I'm going to get on stage and just start crying my stupid eyes out. I'm not going to be able to get through any of the songs. I just, because I'm really emotional. I'm really soft. I can't watch a film or a TV or, or even a YouTube video of a dog without crying. And, and I, you know, I've got tattoos on my neck and stuff and on my hands. I'm trying to portray myself as this like, you know, tough guy. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not that at all. No, the world needs you. That's exactly what we need, though. Do you know, it's like so many mental health problems for men, especially, come from that feeling of not being able to be like that. So yeah. people seeing you expressing yourself in that way has like massive meaning for people. It, it really does. Don't don't underestimate that. I always think that about the Smiths, actually. You know, that that following. You know, whatever has happened with Morrissey now, who you knows? Yeah, it's exactly. heartbreaking to you as it is to me, but yeah. but that kind of feeling that people have towards that band. You know, the, and the, and they're super fans, you know, when you see them and there's a lot of like proper eyed like mank lads who just worship Morrissey in that yeah, way. It's really strange to see, isn't it? It is, it really is. It's always surprised me and it's like, and there's something that they need that he embodies, you know, and so for people like you, it's absolutely, you know, it, it, again, you know, thank you because it matters. It matters to, to young men to see that, to see people who they're, they, they love and admire being able to express themselves in that way it's just really important I think that's the power of art I suppose isn't it and um, I just don't know what I would do without the outlet and I feel so incredibly I, I just feel lucky that I that I can write it down and get it out and, and put it into songs and stuff because otherwise I think I'd like harvest it all and yeah. I, that wouldn't be healthy and, and I think that's just that's what I was getting at with open letter to creatives as well which you mentioned you've seen um, like yeah. it is so important because of all everyone's feeling crap right now it's so important to put that down and, and, and let it come out of you and then turn it into something positive and and that's all I've been trying to do with like with this whole time and lockdown and just having so much time I've just made I've written so many songs and so, and I've made videos and I've done drawings and I've written like things and I, they're not songs or poems I don't know what they are but I needed to do it that day and like that is just so important for me so like I, I just need to really truly push anybody who, who, who's got or maybe they've never even tried to write something down but just use this time and just try and create something because it's uh, I, love I, think that. It's I, I loved that you were that i loved that open letter so much and and i thought and also just a thing in it of like not being too hard on yourself when you can't as well yeah. because i know that you know there's this you know in this world where we've all got to be super achievers all the time as well you know that idea of like you know those days when you you, you can't produce anything and you can't make anything 
you know, I'm an actor, you know, first and foremost, and, it, and it's hard for actors because it's hard to act without somebody giving you the work to do unless you're a, a, an actor writer, you know, it's, it's, it's a difficult thing. And I feel like it's really important to say to people, you know, just to give yourself a break as well. And I felt like you said all that in that and oh, to, to be proud of yourself and to congrat. So how did you, I'm really interested on how you started because I'm always, I'm really involved with Arts Emergency, which is this brilliant organisation you might have heard of. And they, their motto is, if you, you can't, if you can't see it, you can't be it. So they're trying to give opportunities. They started off, it was Josie Long, the comedian, set it up with a couple of mates. And they had that picture of like um, Boris Johnson and George Osborne et al, um, David Cameron and at Eton, you know that picture of them all in their, their yeah. tails and everything, yeah. that one they tried to ban. And they had that picture and they were like, that's, that's a network of people that just help each other all the time. And, and, and as we know throughout this, you know, that cronyism, you know, how can we create an old boys network for people who don't have one? Yeah. And so that's what they've done. And they've tried to get people to mentor, you know, so, so they, you know, put someone who's interested in being a musician with you, you know, yeah. a writer with my husband and actor with me. And you have this like relationship over a year where you give them those opportunities, you know? Yeah. So uh, when did it start for you? How did you first pick up a guitar or what was it with you? I've, I've always been obsessed with music. I, I used to be, when I was a kid, I was just obsessed with Freddie Mercury and Queen. Just like a bit too much, a bit weird obsessed. I used to go in <laughs> school with like a mustache drawn on and a yellow jacket and no one wanted to talk to me. But I've just like always known, or I'd just known, always known that I wanted to be on stage. And, and I didn't really do it until, I wasn't confident enough to do it until um, there was there was like an older band um, that were that were in the last year of school while I was in like the second year of school. And somehow I became friends with them and I could barely play and they invited me into that band and like gave me this chance. And for me, that was such a big deal just to be in the school band with these older guys that could really play and I really looked up to. And then I did that band for a, for a few years until I like wanted to be the singer in the main one. <laughs> and what were, they doing? Were, they, were they doing stuff? Were they doing covers? Or were they doing original stuff? Original that they'd music, written? yeah. So I, I'd never really been in a covers band. I, it was always like original music, which was kind of weird. And then later in life, I started doing covers and playing weddings. Yeah, I love, I love that covers album you did. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah, and so they gave me that opportunity. And so it, it, like the guy, Nick Chris, uh, he still he still texts me, and it's every time we do anything good, or, you know, we got two million streams on one of our tunes the other day. He texts me going, "Oh, there you go, mate. Taught you everything you know." And he won't he won't, he won't let that go. But it's true, he did, and and it really like shaped who I wanted to be. Just that interaction with those guys, and and yeah, and then I just when I started the lottery winners, that was a long time ago now, like twelve years ago, and we just played as many gigs as we could. And I'm sure that it was similar for you. You must have taken acting jobs and and with crappy pay and and yeah. then you just um you just got to do it and get yourself out there until it starts be and, and before you even realize it starts getting more serious i think and then it's easy not to to look at the the success that you've had it's easy to forget about it and just like always think about what's next but in this time i've had a lot of reflection like wow we've achieved a lot and, yeah. and that's nice and i think that's really important in it it's like that idea of um you know the idea idea of there being some sort of ladder is bollocks really you know because yeah. you just think what's at the top of the ladder what is it you know do you yeah. want to be you know do you want to be do you want to be like freddie mercury <laughs> you know really you know do you want that life you know yeah. it's like where, where does that leave lara do you know what i mean where is that like your life you know being married to a nurse and and that proper life that you have as well and, and you, you're sort of like you're chasing something you know you, you think like like for, for me in my profession you think, oh, well, well, what would be the ultimate, like get, getting an Oscar, you know? Yeah. And then you get an Oscar and then, and then what? There's always you've got, win, you've got to win an, another Oscar, you know? Yeah. And there'll always be people like not as successful as you and there'll always be people more successful than you. And it's like, and the striving is what keeps you alive and creative, I think, you know? So you've got to always just be like, yeah, on to the next thing, but also just really appreciate where you are, I think, and really, yeah, because I mean, to be doing what we're doing and being paid for it, it's an amazing thing, oh, isn't it? It, it really is. I never thought that I would get paid to play gigs. I remember the, like, the early gigs when I first got paid, I felt like I was like ripping someone off or like, you know, I felt like a bit bad <laughs> for taking the money. I was like, are you sure you want to, and it's only like 30 quid or something, but I'm like, are you sure you want to pay me for this? Got it. Have you got it though? Yeah, I mean, because you know, 
<laughs> it's pretty fucking poor. It's like, yeah. Yeah, but like, it is it, art is valuable, as we've just said, and and people should get paid. And I, I never try. I never get bogged down with jealousy. And if my mates are doing well in music, then that's amazing, and and I'm really proud of that. And I always want to learn from them, and and I pester them. I'm like, how did you do that? How, you know, like talk to me about it. Like, what 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 was going through your head? Like, how did you manage that? Or and and I get that too, and I always welcome it. And I get a lot of bands messaging me going, oh, how did you get on Soccer AM? And it's like, sure, here's, here's the guy I email, emailed about it. I'm sure he'd love to hear from you or, you know, like, and I always make a point of that because I know how tough it is. Yeah, yeah, not pulling the ladder up once you're there and just yeah. going like, you know, there's enough to go around. You see that, I mean, that's, that's amazing to hear you say that, Tom, because, you know, I, you know, I can't lie. I have struggled with jealousy over the years, you know, and, 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 uh, and I still do. You know, and I know that things are a bit out of cock with me when, I, when I'm starting to look at other people and be like, oh, why have they got that? You know, and, and, and I know that it's time to go back to basics and really start to think about, you know, what I'm in this for, why I'm in it, what I love about it and, and what, yeah. I, what I want to achieve, you know, and, and getting yourself off that sort of like... I don't know, it's almost like capitalist truck, do you know what I mean? Which is just like, what is success? How do I measure it? Whatever, you know, and just do the work and just yeah. be doing the work and, and, and feeling the joy of that as well, you know? And so for you to, to say that, it is so inspiring because that's exactly what it is. It's about there being enough to go around and supporting each other and raising each other up. I think it's, it's a secret of happiness of being a successful creative person. You know, it's about getting down to it, just, just experiencing as much stuff as you can and just, and supporting each other in it, you know, because we're a community and the more of a community we can build, you know, the better and healthier we'll be, I think. Definitely. And if there's anything that I can do for the arts emergency, please let me know. I'm definitely yeah, well yeah. up for that. Yeah, I will. I'll, I'll, I'll send you the link to it, Tom, because I think you'd be really interested in it. It's a, you know, it's a bit of a commitment, but, you know, my husband, Kirsch, um, had a, a mentee for a year and she was just absolutely brilliant. And he just like took her to see stuff and gave her opportunities. And, and it's about that, really. It's about sort of just giving someone who might not have those opportunities and might not know the way into it. You yeah. know, and, and it's not just to be like a performer. It's to be, you know, it's that thing of like, when you look at a telly studio, you know, there's all these jobs that you don't know what they are. And you can't be that if you've never been in a telly studio and seen what it is. You might be the best vision mixer in the world. You might be the best cornet player in the world. But unless somebody puts a coin it in your hand and you play it you know you're just like you never you'll never know you know how many times has that happened with like things in schools where they've just gone like oh everybody gets a violin and everyone's shit you know and then one kid's like oh actually i'm quite good at this and then yeah goes on yeah. to do that and it's about keeping those opportunities open for people in it because yeah. i think there's a culture now as we know of making it feel like it's a, a luxury to be an artist, that it's a bit of a hobby, yeah. that it's something yeah. that's not to be taken seriously and that, you know, it's not a proper. And uh, and all those people who, who have got the sort of, you know, the support, like coming from like a wealthy family or whatever, to take the time to do that stuff, soon those are the only voices we'll hear you know those are the those will be the only people playing music and making music and and writing plays and writing films yeah. because they'll be the only people who it's open to and we've got to work hard to keep it open to everybody because otherwise is otherwise voices like you know like morris's like yours you know be forgotten about so yes yeah, so i'll send you the link for that tom Absolutely. And I will be there. And when you're at the Ritz, I will be there. If yeah, I'm not you working will. Nowhere, I'll come. You've got to let me know and I'll, I'll absolutely be there with, with bells on. I'm really I'm excited for you about that. I am. I can't wait. Thanks so much for talking to me today. Oh, I appreciate you. Oh, it's really lovely to talk to you too. And, uh, and good luck with everything, Tom. And send my um, very best wishes to Laura and say thank you for everything she does. I will.